ever go crazy? What truly boring lives they must lead. Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be doing an album review. I'm gonna be taking a look at what's 1992 album, The Crimson Idol. Now, this is actually a concept album, and some of you might tell you names after that, because concept albums have traditionally been the domain of like, rather pretentious prog rock acts, but don't worry, it's nothing like that. So this album tells the story of a fictional character called Jonathan. This is a kind of timeline of his life, opening with the story of his childhood in The Invisible Boy, before going on to give an account of his rise to fame and conclude him with his untimely demise. So this is an album that really benefits from being played in its entirety to allow the story to really sink in. Now although this album was published under the Wasp banner, this really is the Blackie Lawless show. Not only is he the lead singer, he also contributes guitars, bass and keyboards. And thankfully he's on the form of his life, as on this album he puts in an exceptional vocal performance as well as playing some memorable riffs. But on this record he demonstrates he can do more than just scream and shout with songs like The Gypsy Meets the Boy and The Idol showing he can be thoughtful and reflective as well as angry and aggressive. Another departure from the Wasp of Bold. This album is greatly used of acoustic guitars. These acoustic driven songs allow you to catch your breath a little and also give this record another dimension. Personally I think this is a very smart move because when I'm listening to an album I don't want to hear the same idea rehashed ten times in a row. So it's awesome that Blackie decided to mix things up a little. But rest assured, there are still plenty of songs that you can bang your head to, such as Dr. Rock to, and my personal favourite, James or Charlie. Now, the thing I really like about this album is how the songs kind of link together. Like in The Invisible Boy, you hear bits of the Titanic Hurricane, and in The Great Misconceptions of Me, they reuse a section from The Invisible Boy. Also, towards the start of the album, Jonathan announces, I just want to be the Crimson Idol. But by the album's conclusion, Jonathan realises that fame isn't all it's made out to be, crying, I don't want to be the Crimson Idol. Little touches like this that transform this album from being a mere collection of songs to a complete piece best enjoyed in its entirety. Now, whilst this album undoubtedly deserves its reputation as a metal classic, I do have one slight criticism that Hold On To My Heart doesn't seem to fit with the rest of the album. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's a bad song. In fact, it's one of the better heavy metal ballads out there. But its lyrical themes don't seem to have much of a connection with the overall concept. It kind of disrupts the flow of the story. Personally, I think it would have been better if Blackie had saved the song for the next record, as it's definitely worthy of publication. But as it is, Crimson Idol is still a very fine album. So in conclusion, I definitely recommend you pick up a copy of this album, if possible the remastered version, which includes a disc of bonus tracks. Whether you choose to play the album from start to finish and get really sucked into the concept, as I have, or just listen to your favourite tracks as standalone pieces, I guarantee you will not be disappointed with this album, as it is definitely an album that rewards repeated plays. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Be sure to give me any feedback you got, and uh, I'll put up another video soon. Bye.